By the end of 2021, the Hoka Mach 4 and the ASICS Nova Blast 2 will easily be in the top five daily trainers of the year, if not both being in the top five shoes of the year. But which of these is the better daily trainer? It's time to lace them up and let them battle head to head. Ten point two seven miles, eight minutes, thirty three seconds per mile, one hundred and forty beats per minute today. Going for an easy run with some strides in the Asics Nova Blast Two, and going for the same run the day before in the Hoka One One Mach Four, so that I can compare these two shoes in a direct daily trainer head to head battle. Now, before I give you my thoughts on these two shoes, I do want to go over some disclosures. These shoes were each provided to me by their respective manufacturers for the purpose of review. However, no one is paying me to make this video or to include their shoes in a battle video. And no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Hoka Mach 4 versus the Asics Nova Blast 2. First, let's go over some specs on these shoes. And I do have an important update. There's been a little bit of, not controversy, but at least for my part, some confusion as to what the stack height is on this shoe. And finally, I was able to get my hands on a spec sheet from Hoka for this shoe. And I can tell you that this shoe is a 29 millimeter stack height shoe, which is different than what I've been reporting previously. You guys were right. It is a 29 millimeter stack height shoe with a five millimeter drop, giving us 24 millimeters of ProFly midsole foam in the forefoot. That ProFly midsole is both a midsole and an outsole. It's a dual layer system where that top layer is lightweight and super soft. And the bottom layer also serves as the outsole because there is no outsole rubber at all. Instead, what you have is a rubberized EVA that is soft enough to run on, but also durable enough to run directly on itself. Up top, there is an engineered mesh with a nice and roomy toe box, a very lightly padded ventilated mesh tongue, which I definitely have been enjoying. And around back, we have a very pronounced Achilles flare with a lot of cushion on this back part. What we also have is another design element is what they're calling the swallow tail design for this heel area, this crash pad area, in case you are landing back here in a heel strike, or maybe you're going downhill. It's supposed to help distribute some of those forces a little bit better, but I think that really it just looks nice. I'm not really sure how functional that swallowtail design is, but overall, I do like it. And this entire package comes in at a weight of 8.2 ounces or 232 grams. For the A6 Nova Blast 2, what we have is a shoe full of that lovely FF Blast midsole foam that we first came to know and love in the Nova Blast 1 when it was debuted last year. Super squishy, super soft, but also very resilient, bounces back really quickly and doesn't leave you feeling like you've stepped in quicksand or mud when you hit this soft midsole foam. On the outsole, we have Ahar Plus, which is Asics High Abrasion Rubber Plus. As far as the stack heights go on this shoe, we've got 30 millimeters of stack height in the heel with an eight millimeter drop, which makes it a little bit different than the version one of last year. And that leaves us with 22 millimeters of that wonderful stack height in the forefoot. Up top, we have a double jacquard mesh, which keeps things nice and breathable. It's also plenty roomy as well. There's a lightly padded tongue that comes up a little bit tall, but it's not the most ludicrous of tongues that ASICS has in its lineup for 2021. Overall, I like what they've done with it. And there's a moderate amount of padding around the heel cup on the back, making it very comfortable to run in without making it too like unnecessarily pillowy and hot. As far as heel structure goes, there is a pretty substantial heel cup back here giving you lots of support and control in the back 
of the heel in this shoe. This shoe comes in a little bit heavier than the Mach 4. I don't have an official weight from ASICS on this one, but I did measure it. My shoe is a size nine, which is reference size. And so my shoe comes in at a measured weight of 9.7 ounces. So now that we've talked about what these shoes are like on paper, what are these shoes like on foot? So let's talk about a couple of different ways that you might use these shoes. And as we go, I'll talk about which one I prefer. First, let's talk about your everyday training. The everyday run that you will go on, an easy run, if you're doing 80-20 training, that 80% of the runs, that you're just going out there, keeping it at a nice conversational pace and logging those miles, building that aerobic base. Both of these shoes are fantastic at that easy run. And for the daily training, I'd be happy to pick up either one of these shoes on any given day for my running. And as well for long runs and recovery runs as well, these shoes are fantastic for those tasks because both of them are very comfortable, especially with the FF Blast. It is the squishier foam. It's nice and soft. You're getting that comfort. You feel the squishiness with each step and it doesn't fade away quickly. So you're constantly feeling that softness underfoot and it just soaks up miles. But again, the miracle of that FF Blast foam is that you don't get stuck in it once your foot hits the ground, it pushes you back up off the ground in a really pleasant way that makes it feel like those miles are just effortless and you could just keep on going. The Mach 4 is a little bit of a more firm shoe, but you do have that soft top layer of the Pro Fly, which also does feel nice and comfortable. And the bottom layer does what it does in terms of grip and traction, but also giving you some responsiveness. So again, you're not getting stuck when you land in something soft, you're getting picked up off the ground nice and snappy way. That all being said, I do think that I prefer the Nova Blast 2 and that FF Blast material for the easy run and for the long run. So like the main things that you would do with the daily trainer, the recovery run as well. I just prefer that little extra bit of squishiness that the Nova Blast 2 has. And so that's the one that I'm gonna pick for being the better kind of just easy run, long run, recovery run type of shoe. But that's not, I mean, and you would think for like an everyday trainer, well, that's the end of the battle, right? The Nova Blast 2 wins. Not necessarily because an everyday trainer, I think needs to have a little bit of versatility to it. it, has to have a little bit of range, so to speak. Not necessarily just range in terms of mileage, but range in terms of the paces that it can handle. And while both of these shoes are surprisingly good when you have to pick up the pace, I do think that the Mach 4 does a little bit of a better job than the Nova Blast 2 when it comes to running fast. So for example, for today, I had some strides towards the end of the run that I had put into the workout for today. And when you're picking up the pace, the Nova Blast 2, even though it's a bit heavy at 9.7 ounces, it doesn't really feel like a 9.7 ounce shoe when you're trying to move faster, closer towards mile race pace type of effort. But I do think that the Mach 4 does just that better job. Not only is it more than an ounce lighter, I just feel like the rubberized EVA outsole layer really starts to shine and becomes more of a midsole material than just kind of like a rubber outsole replacement. So the top layer of the ProFly, which is soft, kind of bottoms out once you're really pushing off hard and digging into the ground and trying to move quickly. But that's where the more firm rubberized EVA layer then starts to kind of like come into play. And as you're putting more force into the ground, this foam really starts to liven up. And when you're trying to go fast, the Mach 4, I think is the better shoe for going fast. The FF Blast, because it is so soft, I do feel like once you get kind of like past 5K pace, which is not something I do frequently, uh, or at least not for extended periods of time in a daily trainer necessarily. But once you're kind of getting up into those faster paces, like I do feel like the FF Blast starts to bottom out just a little bit. It still feels great and it's surprisingly good at going fast, but in the comparison between the Nova Blast 2 and the Mach 4, when it comes to going fast, I do think that the Mach 4 is the better shoe. And it's not just the midsole foam that does that. I do think that the upper is better on the Mach 4 as well. They're both doing a very good job of holding your foot in place securely when you do have to go faster when you're working harder. And they're both really comfortable shoes in terms of giving me space in the toe box, which I'm definitely appreciating, at least now when I have some higher mileage weeks and my feet feel a little bit more beat up. I definitely appreciate both of these shoes, but I do think that the Mach 4 just 
fits my foot just a little bit better and I just feel like I'm having a little bit more comfort in here while also not having to compromise in the event that I do have to go a little bit faster or pick up the pace. So as far as the uppers go, I definitely appreciate the Mach 4 just a little bit better. Now, another substantial difference, or at least a superficially substantial difference between these two shoes is the amount of grip or just the outsoles generally. With the Mach 4, you have no rubber on the outsole. And with the A6, you have A6, Ahar Plus. And A6 is definitely a company known for the rubber and the durability of those outsoles. For a lot of you, I've been hearing you've been running into some issues with durability on your Mach 4s. I'm starting to see a little bit of wear so far on the outside edge of my Mach 4s, but I do think that it's holding up better than say the exposed EVA foam that I see in some of my other Hoka shoes. And overall, I think that it's holding up just fine as far as a road shoe goes. So durability, I'm not yet quite concerned about it, although I am seeing a little bit of wear. For the ASICs, I'm not seeing, I mean, the AHAR Plus is pretty much bulletproof. A lot of you guys were concerned last year with the Nova Blast 1 that the rubber layer being so thin that it really wouldn't hold up. Mine held up just fine, so it wasn't an issue for me at all. As far as durability of the outsole goes, I think the ASICs is definitely going to have it. And as far as the grip goes, I think the ASICs also edges out the Mach 4 as well. That being said, I've had both of these shoes in very wet conditions, very slippery conditions, and I'm not concerned about traction in either one of them. But when it comes to which one has more grip and more durability, it's definitely going to be the Nova Blast 2. Now that I've gone through all my different categories and comparing these two shoes, it's time to crown it a champion. And in this battle, I'm definitely picking the Nova Blast 2. I prefer the extra squishy softness. I'm always excited to put on the shoe and take it for a run. It is just fantastic. A lot of little improvements over version one from last year. And I think that they made a great shoe even better. I'm absolutely loving the Nova Blast 2. But even though I do think the Nova Blast 2 is the better shoe than the Mach 4, I do think that there is a lot of scenarios where you would want to have both of these shoes in your lineup. One, if you just love running and you want to run in the best two daily trainers, at least that I've seen so far this year, pick up both of these shoes is what I would say. You're not going to be disappointed if you're a running enthusiast or if you're just running enough miles that you know you're going to need more than one daily trainer for the rest of 2021. Again, I'd say pick up both of them because they're both a lot of fun to run in. You're going to have a lot of happy miles and you're going to be able to do a variety of workouts from easy runs to threshold workouts, fart licks, and even some of your speed workouts you'll be able to do in these shoes as well. You're going to get a lot of use out of them and you're going to have a good time because these are two fantastic shoes. Let me know if you have any questions about these two shoes or if you agree or disagree. I'd love to hear about it more in the comments down below. Or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do just about every day on YouTube. I'd love to talk about shoes or you can ask me anything you like there. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?